Okay, great. We're going to go along to the next segment of our program. I'll be speaking to my second guest, Greg Zangi, in just a few minutes. But first, we have more video. We have a video of a Tesla bodybuilding facility. And we also have some more video from the Tesla showroom. So let's go ahead and pull that tape. Tesla is headed by Elon Musk, who founded the company in 2003. Mr. Musk is also founder and CEO of the SpaceX company, which builds space vehicles under contract to NASA. He previously founded PayPal, the online money transferring service that was later sold to eBay. In addition to the technology side of Tesla, there's also the marketing side. I asked sales advisor Mickey Sofer about that. Now the cars in the showroom today, these roadsters are fairly expensive. What's your target demographic? What is the typical customer like? So it's, it's hard to say what our typical customer is like. We get people who are into the roadster because of the environmental consciousness, because of the cool technology factor. We get a lot of people who are, you know, kind of techie nerd geeks. We got a lot of people who are, you know, just thought leaders in their field. They, they want to be the first one to jump into something like this and make a difference, make a statement. And of course, we also get the sports car fanatics. Now, I understand that you're developing a different model for selling cars other than the traditional dealership format. What's your planned method for selling cars? Yeah, that's right. We're actually, we don't work with dealerships. So all of our stores around the world are owned entirely by Tesla. So when people come forward into the store, they know that they're being you know, talked to and dealt with by Tesla trained employees. Um, no one's trying to you know, swindle them. We're extremely transparent in our practices. Um, no one's coming in to negotiate the price of the car because it's fixed. It's very much like buying a piece of technology more than it is buying car in the traditional sense. And I think it relieves a lot of the pressure that people get when they walk into a showroom. They feel like they need to be guarded and um, we really want the buying experience to be enjoyable and comfortable for people and for, you know, especially the initial group of owners that we've had, they really become part of the Tesla family. Do you think Tesla will always be a high-end car, always servicing the high end of the market, or will this be something that serves the entire market? You know, that's a good question. I don't know ultimately where we're going to end up. I know that initially when Tesla started, one of the big visions was to come out with a car, like the Roadster, that's going to get people excited about electric vehicles. And obviously being a high-end car, it allows us to subsidize the cost of the R&D and allow our customers to step into a really great electric vehicle sooner. The proceeds from that are then going to fund a more mass market car, which we're coming out with in 2012, the Model S sedan. That was some more of our footage from our visit to the Tesla showroom in Menlo Park. And I'm now speaking to Greg Zangi, who is head of the uh, service department of Tesla Motors. Greg, I understand that Tesla has a slightly different philosophy of customer service than many other automakers. What is your approach to customer service? Um, it's a good question. The, 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 the long and the short of it is, is that we want to have a relationship with our customer. We want to, uh, I don't have my technicians working in the back and, you know, just having you come in and talk to our service managers or service writers only. Um, all of my technicians have business cards, and there's a reason for that. Is because I want to have, uh, like I mentioned before, that relationship with you. If you happen to have a, a technical question, you have an issue with your car, um, I want to have that relationship where you can call them, talk to them about what, what's going on, and they can take care of you immediately, uh, that you have a name associated with your car. Um, also, that allows us to uh, capture a lot of information from the customer, uh, potential performance improvements that we can do, uh, to the vehicle, uh, also if we see any sort of trends that we need to, to take care of. Because this um, is still pretty new technology, right? So you want to monitor what happens to these cars on the road yeah. so you can fix the bugs if That's there right. are any. Absolutely, absolutely. And you say that you have mobile road service as well if a person has a problem on the road. What kind of mobile service do you provide? I mean, you must be pretty spread out. Well, honestly, about 75% of our customers live within uh, about 50 to 100 miles of a Tesla uh, store. Um, that being said, that kind of leaves the 25% as being outliers uh, in the U.S. Uh, as an example. Um, that being said, um, there's a lot of information that we can garner from the car that allows us to take action. We can uh, often take uh, information from the logs and make a determination if we even need to visit the car. Or, uh, and that if that's the case, uh, a lot of the components we can go out there and replace on site at their home or their, uh, their place of work. What would be the most common reason for a road call? Would it be 
just the battery is out or something else? The, the, I think the fundamental thing here is the Roadster is a car. It's a vehicle that doesn't make any compromises. And if you looked at it and you actually didn't know that the Roadster was electric, a lot of people you know, just look at it as a vehicle. That being said, it behaves just like a regular vehicle. People get flat tires. Sometimes they get in little fender bender accidents. Uh, we've had a couple of people, you know, that, that may have gone uh, uh, the distance uh, on their uh, pack state of charge, but you know, it just behaves like a normal vehicle. Can you give them a charge? I mean, would would, be, would calling you be like a gasoline car owner calling the AAA? get the same type of service? No, the technology today isn't designed uh, in such a way, but you know, in the future, having that rapid charge like all we uh, touch base on, that, that has the potential. Now, do you plan to install chargers everywhere, you know, shopping malls, public places? Because the infrastructure has to exist. Right, and that's a growing market. There's a lot of companies that are emerging here, uh, not only in the Bay Area, uh, but even some of the larger companies that are um, you know, as you know, as we built uh, uh, vehicles around the turn of the century, then we had to build gas stations, and then uh, and then those would start to proliferate the the market along with roads. And so the same thing is happening uh, in the charging infrastructure uh, neck of the woods, and we you know and we collaborate with those uh, companies. So if people buy the car now, they feel confident that the infrastructure will be there when they need it. Yes. Basically. Yeah, and it's growing. It's it's a it's a it's a sizable market that's going to be. Uh, this just got a tremendous amount of opportunity, and uh, if you think of charging, you have to think of the uh, like Ollie said that the charger exists on the on the Roadster, and within the Model S. And that being said, the 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 charging infrastructure is just a plug. How do you figure the efficiency of the car in a gasoline car? It's miles per gallon. Here you don't have gasoline, so is it? Uh, Miles per kilowatt hour. How do you, how do you determine that? Yeah, and it's that's precisely it. Miles per kilowatt hour, and, and imagine that you know if you, if you drive your car today, it may cost you uh, thirty or forty dollars to fill it up. You could be looking at just a few dollars to charge the Roadster or the Model S. Okay, we're going to go on to our third and final segment of the show in just a minute. But we have one more video from the Tesla showroom. In fact, this is a road test of the Tesla Roadster with me behind the wheel. Let's go ahead and roll that tape. 